any oceanographic expedition, you kind of have this feeling of total immersion in the science and the culture of, of being at sea. There's no lawn mowing, there's no dishwashing. Basically, we can focus 100% on getting the job done, and so it's pretty exciting. The Nankai Trough is a very important area off of Japan, which is susceptible to major earthquakes and tsunamis. So what we're doing is basically a wide range of scientific investigations into the basic background of, of what is here uh, so we can better understand it. I like studying microbes because it's like being a detective. You have something that's so small and it's hard to look at, but there's so much information inside. Lower part of the genius plug contains a sampling unit where you can grow microbes and also save fluids for chemistry. And we basically exploit the situation that we have the instrument in the fault zone so we get a signal from depth, like an elevator if you want, and see whether microbes actually grow at that depth and that large pressure and temperature. So the coils have come up and now we're cutting them into one meter lengths. And so I have a whole team here helping me out. So we don't know much about the subsurface biosphere. We don't know how they're living, how they got there, and what they're doing. And how do they decide to live in certain places? I hope that these experiments will help us decide that. Why a microbe decides to attach to a rock? What chemistry is it looking for that it finds most habitable? And it's really great that we get these really pristine, clean samples that the Genius Plug supplies. That's perfect. The upper part of the Genius Plug is a temporary observatory which is very robust, so it has only pressure and temperature sensors in it, looking into the borehole and then looking up to the seafloor, comparing the two. So the pressure data in particular tell us about earthquakes and tsunamis. And from the data we have processed so far, we can actually see that there is a very strong signal for the Tohoku earthquake, including a large number of aftershocks and changes in the pressure over several days and weeks afterwards. The most exciting thing is actually the earthquake on April Fool's Day, basically a couple of hours before we retrieved the instrument out of the hole. That was a magnitude six earthquake, and we were able to process these data and look at the pressure deviations over time. Damien Safer is a hydrogeologist from the United States. We jointly developed the Smart Plug and Genius Plug units and also worked on components of the LTBMS, the more complex observatory system for the fault zone. So I'm very glad that he is on here to complement the science party. We are about 300 feet above sea level on top of the drilling derrick on the JQ. First of all, you always have people who are thinking it's really cool. 
But the moment they step out of the elevator and they look straight away down, I also had scientists who freaked out. But the moment they are up here, they see it all and they get relaxed and then they really enjoy it, actually. So cameras are everywhere. They are tracking us now. All the cameras on board are remote controlled. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's fluid too. It says hi. <laughs> LTBMS stands for Long-Term Borehole Monitoring System. There are two key components to that. One is the long-term, of course, because it's designed to continuously record information over a long period of time. We're talking about uh, years to decades or longer. And then the other key part of it is system, because it's not a single instrument, but it's actually this suite of complementary measurements and instruments that are going down together that provide these streaming data that allow us to do science and assess or mitigate hazards. We're gonna go down basically inside the casing and then we need to drill through all that cement so we can get into new formation and drill new hole, make the hole a little bit deeper to take the new completion that we're gonna run. Okay, the Weaver's gonna keep coming down there at that pace. Right, can you all stop? Right, come on down, you're good. That number. Communication here is one of the key key goals between three different parties involved. You know, we've got ROV who are down at the bottom of the seabed, we've got us who are at the centre of the hole, and then we've got the, the bridge team who are positioning the vessel as per the ROV request. Um, we've got the simple bit, we only need to go up and down, but ROV and the bridge need to be very technical with our headings and stuff, so good teamwork. <laughs> These observatories are many years in the making and in the planning. Uh, in this case, the original proposal for the equipment that we're sending down to the seafloor uh, was written in 2006. We purchased the equipment in 2009. And so this is now the critical point where we want to make sure everything's working perfectly. So there's a, a lot of checking and preparing before we send things down uh, through the moon pool. We've got uh, a water pump, and what we're going to do is basically, when we get the pressure unit moved over, we're going to hook that in over here into the bay, uh, and then we're going to do a series of pressure tests. Uh, then we're going to look at the data that comes out of the pressure tests and just make sure everything's working correctly. The tests are critical because the last thing we want to do is waste a whole bunch of time sending the pipe down with all the instruments if we already know there's a problem. So far, so good. <laughs> yeah. So there are these kind of critical moments, but I know it makes these guys pretty stressed out back there. You know, we've been working for years for this, and so this is the moment where uh, we hope it works.